She's pretty much done for the base layer. Did you tell I was bored yesterday? <laughs> it was Sunday afternoon. I said, well, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Let's go ahead and put it on video. I'm gonna show you how to make a home putting or chipping green. Pretty easy to do. Hold on one sec. Hey guys, so this is, um, this is a project I've been talking about for, oh, the last year or so. I wanted to do some kind of home putting green we'll call it and it's not necessarily a putting green per se I would call it more of a chipping green you know it's, uh, it looks cute we're gonna have uh, probably about a 40 yard chip into it and eventually we might get it to the point where we could put on it and I'll explain that here in a minute but one of the first things I want to do for this about this is I want to show you a clip now this is the grassy knoll area in our yard and last year, what we did was we put excessive amounts of human char, biochar, the initial testing stuff we had, and organic matter on this area in here. And without realizing it, when I started aerating, I want to show you a clip, the difference. Now, all my soil is solid red clay from the top of the soil down. And I've said before that human char takes a long time. Any kind of biochar takes between your surface applying, because we're not tilling it in, takes a long time to work down in. But I want to show you, this has been eight months we've been doing this back here, heavy treatments of human char and organic matter. I want to show you the difference in coloration of this dirt in the first inch or inch and a half. Let me put up that clip real quick. Okay, this is really amazing. I'm going to show you now that grassy knoll we started treating last fall with lots of humic char, biochar, humic, organic matter. I want you to look at the difference in this. This is crazy. And I hope you can really see that. So this is the red clay that's all over my lawn. This is after a year of super heavy humichar treatments look at that look at that color look at that see the difference organic matter and humichar regular red clay soil that is simply amazing i gotta take a picture of that that my friends is amazing and that's what we're trying to do with Humichar. Humichar is not a product you put on your lawn and all of a sudden, a week or two later, it looks fantastic. Humichar is a way to take 
crappy soil, which we almost all have, and over time, it's a long process, it's a year or two process, we start to create that carbon-rich soil that'll hold on to the nutrients. You have to understand that. If you want quick results, get PGF Complete, which sells out fast now because of all this virus stuff. PGF Complete is the number one thing you should be putting on your lawn, and right now you should be putting it out every three or four weeks. Put it out, put it out, put it out. Push your lawn, but Humichar is the high-tech way to deliver humic acid and biochar into your lawn on a repeated basis uniformly. And it'll get down in that soil because it's micronized, and that's what we just proved with this clip. So anyways, let's talk about the green. By the way, hit subscribe because if you're cute and smart and intelligent, that's who subscribes. <laughs> because we've got a ton of videos coming up. I'm gonna replace 500 feet of fence. I got all kinds of stuff coming up, pressure washing videos. So hit subscribe. And then anything I'm talking about today, if you're interested in anything, I'll put links on the web page below. So Humichar, PGF, all that stuff. So let me tell you what I'm doing here. This is not a full putting green project, just so you know, a little bugs. What I'm doing here is just basically modifying an area that already exists on my lawn. Um, I'm not doing any excavation. The problem with putting greens, my background is golf course. And let me just explain how a putting green is made real quick. You take big drainage pipes, you put in big drainage pipes, you excavate this huge area, then you put in very large gravel, drainage gravel. Then you put what's called a root zone mix, a couple feet of root zone, which is like Oh, 70-30 mix of sand and organic matter. And then you shape it and you mold. That's not what we're doing here. All I'm doing here is, is I'm go I'll walk you through the steps, but I'm trying to create a firmed up base layer that has a little bit of a shape to it. I'm trying to get sand into the soil to help with the drainage on it. And I will probably replace or overseed with a different kind of grass here. And uh, just to give it a little bit different look, texture, because that's really what this is, is when you walk out back, it's pretty, you have the pool, you have the nice shed, you have a little putting green back here. It just look nice too. You know, you come out in the after, late afternoon, you want to hit a couple golf balls into this. Uh, if you really want a putting green, you have to have dwarf Bermuda. And dwarf Bermuda is very, very tiny, and you can cut it down to eighth of an inch. The problem is, is they don't sell dwarf Bermuda seeds, so you have to sprig it in here. Now, will I do that at some point? I don't know. Uh, I just don't think I'm up to that. Right now, I just want something that we can just sort of have over here, have it look cool, you know, hit, chip some golf balls into it, maybe putt, we'll see. But typical Bermuda blades are just too large to cut that small. Um, and again, they don't make a dwarf Bermuda in a dwarf Bermuda in a seed that I could get. You have to sprig it and I just don't want to go through that. So this is step one. I'll walk you through the steps um, and then later we'll come out and we'll do some more stuff to it. So what I'm going to do is I'll just put up the steps one by one just in case you're interested in doing this again. I did this all by myself. Got to this point in one afternoon. Um, you don't need many tools. You do need an aerator. And uh, I'll just walk you through it step by step and put up the steps real quick. Okay, so this is about as, as redneck as it gets. I have no idea if this is going to work. All right, so I've got my stake in the ground. I said, well, wait a minute. If I want to make a nice pretty circle, let me tie this. Tie that to the front. Maybe I can go around in a circle and it'll lead me. <laughs> Dude, you know there's going to be an ambulance showing up here in about 20 minutes. <laughs> Close your finger. The problem at first was is I wasn't trusting my theory. Man, that's friggin' great, dude. Let me get on the diving board here and not get wet. Oops. 
oops, oops. Can you see it? That's pretty badass there. So, <laughs> uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the sweeper and I'm gonna sweep this up. And then I should be able to tie another loop in that thing and it'll guide me or else I can just do it manually. So I've done two outside circles that I went back and forth one time, leaving a space in between so I didn't crush my turds. And now I'm going back and doing my spaces. You can see maybe holes with the turds, holes without the turds. And what I'm gonna do here is finish raking these turds up, come back with heavy coat of humichar and throw some sand and then rake it so it gets down into the holes. One of the keys here is, uh, is good drainage and I can't dig this up. I'm not gonna dig this up. So what I'm doing is, is I'm gonna fill most of these holes up with sand and humichar. Then I'll roll that and then I'll come back with more rooting material, which is a mix of sand and organic. <laughs> So most of my grass is half to three quarter. This, oh, so you can see it. That's what I am right there. And I really need to have dwarf in here, but we'll see what happens. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, humichar and I'm gonna put humichar down really heavy. <laughs> and why is that? because this is the only chance I'll probably get. It's just like tilling up. I was talking to someone about laying turf down um, and if you, or sod, and that is the one time to really put down humichar and put a ton, tw 10 to 20 times the bag rate. Same thing here, because I've got all these holes open up. I'm gonna put it out, I'm gonna rake it, and then I'm gonna put sand and rake the sand too. So I'm gonna do both of those. You thought I was kidding, huh? Let me show you just how heavy I'm putting this humichar out. It's insane how heavy I'm putting it out here. Let's do it with the sun block. See it? It's like solid black there. And I'm just gonna rake it and get it to go into those holes.
a day that was. <laughs> Holy cow. So anyways, there she is. You can just leave that. You can start cutting it. Now I've rolled it twice. You can just start cutting it and cutting it and cutting it and cutting it. So, it's the next day. So, the base green is already there. If you just wanted um, something to look a little bit different, something to chip into, you could stop here. But let me tell you where we're going next with this. So, the next thing I'm doing is I have... Um, not rooting material, but it's a mixed material that I'm bringing in and I'll probably put about a half inch of that on. That is 70-30 organic matter and sand mix, so it's more of a dark brown. And that's really what golf courses use to build their greens. So I'll put that on top and then I have some uh, not golf green seed, but probably either some blackjack or some Yukon seed and then I'll reseed this so it has a different look texture wise in my backyard that's really all i want now i've got a flag coming in i'll put a flag there you know we'll be hitting some golf balls back over this way you know it's about a 35 40 yard little chip and we'll see will i be able to putt on it i don't know probably not but it's just something different and the nice thing about this is if I didn't want it anymore, I just basically just let it grow back up into Bermuda. But I want to stress the fact that what was really shocking to us was how, what kind of an impact the human char had on the soil. Now, again, I'm going to stress this. Human char is slow because you're not mixing it into the soil like a regular biochar. It has to work its way down in slowly over time. And what we've seen back here is that over about eight months, we've gotten it probably about an inch to inch and a half where we have that really sort of dark carbon rich and organic type soil back here. It's just, it's really shocking. Now the other thing I'll, I'll show you real quick, and, and I'll be doing updates on this little by little. I wanna show you the garden. Now, I showed you guys in an earlier video how to make this miracle soil <laughs> where all we did was just take regular garden soil we mixed in humichar sprayed with a little super juice and a microbial pack and then we added organic matter into that we let that digest and then we mix that into our normal soil and what ends up happening is is that process produces its own nutrients and i sent that off to clemson soil testing and it was off the charts for nutrients and for the cecs which is your cation cation exchange capability long story if you didn't watch the video but I'm seeing growth like I've never seen in my gardens I'm not seeing fungus issues because good fungus bites good microbes fight the bad microbes and bad fungus uh, I'll show you that over here it's just it's just shocking I'm telling you get human char put it on your lawn put it in your soils and again don't expect that immediate result it's a long-term investment but in your vegetable garden it is an immediate let me show you that so i'm going to put up a picture real quick of what these tomato plants look like three and a half weeks ago when i planted them they were about oh eight inches tall and the yellow squash that i have was only about six inches tall now this is right almost four weeks look at that those tomato plants are breaking 36 inches and almost all of them have tomatoes on them Look at the squash, that's amazing. Now those squash plants were five, six inches, little tiny squash plants. Look at them, they are absolutely enormous. Like look at the size of this leaf here. That's just crazy. And the tomato plants, all I can say is wow. I mean just thick, thick main branches gorgeous beautiful so there should be uh, plenty of humid char up I've also talked to Anderson's and they have more truckloads coming so hopefully the humid char shortage issue will be done with like I said because of the virus and transportation issues everything is running a little bit more expensive humid char is up I think it's like they had like a 10% price increase just because of what's going on with all the plant shutdowns and everything. Uh, but everything's having that, so whatever. We'll deal with it until it's all resolved. So, uh, 
hit subscribe. A bunch more videos coming out. Like I said, they're coming to redo this entire fence. <laughs> the entire fence. 500 linear feet. <laughs> Plus what I'm gonna have them do on the fence. Uh, I'm gonna have them build a special little area around the pool pump with a little gate. I'm gonna have them build that. And we're gonna have a fence built six foot normal. And then I'm gonna have a foot of lattice on top of it. So it should be pretty cool. Tomorrow we'll be out here cutting grass. <laughs> we'll be cutting grass and doing a couple treatments. I'll see you then. Die.